tuning in. What's up, everybody? It's your girl, Janae. Thank you for joining me for another episode of High Low News. And you know what we do here. We bring dope people who are doing great things in the community to your screen so you can learn everything about what they're doing and learn how you can support. And today is no different. Today is a very special day. I have a dear friend who has been doing a lot of work in the Overtown community and in the Day County school system. And he's here to share some information with us that is going to like really rock and change what's going on in Overtown. Um, Without further ado, I would love to bring on Mr. Kevin Lawrence to the uh, Hilo News screen. What's up, Kevin? <laughs> Janae, what's good? How are you? What's good? People don't know. We go way back. You, We were talking about this other day. You said, I've known you like most of your life. Like, that's really, really crazy when you think about it. Because I'm old as fuck out here. <laughs> see, I, I see that, that sense of humor still there. But but truthfully, um, knowing you from you were a, a freshman in high school in yeah. Kale's class and seeing what you're doing with yourself. Just want you to know that I'm extremely proud of you and everything that you're doing. Every time, you know, we don't talk a lot, but when we do, it's always great. And just know that I'm proud of the work that you're doing. And um, I can't be more happy to be here with you today. Oh, man, I really appreciate it because you don't do that much press. You like really about the work and being in the community. So I feel like I'm getting exclusive. This is like Jay-Z coming out of retirement. This is like Diddy coming on. This is like Ross giving me the exclusive. You know, like I, I really appreciate it. <laughs> you know what? You haven't made it until you've done high low. So I'm, I'm, I'm the one that should be honored. I'm, I'm here right now. I'm, I'm with you. Um, I got some really cool things to talk about, but you haven't done anything until you've done high low. So I'm here now and I'm, I'm, I'm ready to speak on this. Oh, y'all heard it here first. We're going to be using that as a drop. <laughs> but Kevin, you know, if people who don't, don't know who you are, can you tell them a little bit about your background and, and what your connection is in the Overtown community? And you're a principal at Booker T High School. So tell us a little bit about your journey getting to that that place. No, you know, I, I'll tell you something. You and I, you talked about how far back we go. And, you know, I started out in this whole Miami-Dade County public school system as a substitute teacher, believe it or not, and just working my way up. And along the way, I was blessed to just come in contact with some incredible young people. To this day, I still have relationships with so many students and seeing where they are and what they're doing with themselves. I, um, I started out, like I said, as a sub, then became a classroom teacher. And in the years that I was a classroom teacher, seven, I, I started seeing things that I felt needed to change within the organization. And I said, you know, maybe I need to go into administration. And for six years, I was the assistant principal at Horace Mann Middle School. I and remember that. Right? <laughs> and I was promoted to being the vice principal at Booker T. And I was at Booker T for five years as the vice principal. And through, you know, just through hard work and being blessed and having people believe in me, I was given the opportunity to become the principal of Horace Mann. So I went back and then last summer, you know, I was given probably the greatest opportunity professionally for any educator. And I was given the opportunity to become the, pr the principal of the historic Booker T. Yes. Washington Senior High School. So tornado stand up, you know, being a guy that graduated from Miami Central, you know, is is you might say, well, you a Central guy, you you leave the 95th to be in Overtown, but you know, Overtown is an incredible community, and not just Overtown. We got Wynwood, we got Little Havana, and we got some surrounding areas. Man, shout out to Brickle, you know, that's a part of the <laughs> boundaries. You know, we we believe it or not, we do have students that live out on Brickle that that come to this this historic school and. I'm just really excited. You know, we're doing some incredible things here at Booker T. I have an incredible staff. I got just incredible parents, incredible kids. And it's a dream come true because if you are in education, if you are an administrator, you, you haven't really done anything until you can look back and say that you've helped kids get to a different level. Yeah. And I think that 
you know, in doing this and you have experiences, I'm sure you've had some outstanding administrators and then you may have had administrators that may not have been everything you needed them to be. Every day I come to work, I just try to be the kind of, of principal that I would have wanted when I was a student. You know, I could be I could be tough, but to be honest with you, there are two kinds of teachers that I'm sure everybody out there remembers. You remember the really good ones and the really bad ones. You don't remember the ones that's in the middle. And I never want to be that that person that was in the middle. Either you're going to love me or you're going to hate me. But if somebody say Kevin Lawrence, they're going to say, man, I love Mr. Lawrence. They're going to say, I can't stand that dude. But <laughs> guess what? That means I had some sort of impact on your life and I can live with that. I can definitely say, because, you know, some of my my classmates, they had you as a teacher um, and it's always been love. And I think it's really um, kind of remarkable that you came up in um, through the Day County Schools and now you're a principal at a school. And so you're like giving back directly to the system that helps shape the men and the, the professional that you are. So that's pretty dope. Although I'm not going to give you too much because y'all the fake orange and black to me. I'm Kara City all day. Um don't don't talk about my stint at the West. I, I love the Bulls, but I'm a chief at heart. So I'm gonna give you that with your fake orange and black on. But I, I got love for Booker T. It's all it's all about Miami Dade, though. But I had to say that to you. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm gonna say something to you, and, and I'm gonna be completely honest. I'm gonna say this year, 1926, and a lot of people don't know what that is because you call out the fake orange and black. I'm gonna tell you something, and a lot of people don't know this about the historic. Booker T. Washington Senior High School. In 1926, Booker T. was the only high school in South Florida that allowed African Americans to get an education beyond wow. the eighth grade. And believe it or not, students came from as far north as West Palm Beach, and they came from as far south as Key West to learn in this historic institution. So, you know, love to CC. I have no beef with the chiefs out there, but I do have to let it be known that the historic Booker T. Washington Senior High School was the only school that did that for African Americans and people of color. So, you know, just just letting that be known. And I, I, I you know, I'm accustomed to wearing green and white, but I do think I look very good in the real orange and black. I'm gonna just put that you, know, you know what? And I've heard that history about Booker T. And you saying that I'm gonna let it, I'll let it slide for that because you know Booker T is definitely that staple of education in our community, especially in the black community. So it's all props to Booker T for the, the his, history that that it held holds and what it was significance it has for our community. Um today there is something else significant happening in that community. Um and in Overtown, and that's going to be a major game changer for the Overtown community. Miami Connected is announcing a launch and they're going to be giving broadband to the Overtown community and little Haiti community and surrounding communities. And it's a big partnership with a whole bunch of different uh uh, key players. I saw the Miami Foundation, Achieve Miami, Emerge America. Shout out to uh, Melissa Medina over there, my girl. Um, there's so many other people, Francis, uh, Mayor uh, Francis Suarez, Daniela Levine Cava, and also you. You've been like a pivotal person, you know, to get this for it and, and get this done in the community. Tell me about um, your role or your support for this initiative um, and what that means for the community and specifically your students. Um, to be honest with you, Janae, I, I played this big a role in this thing, and I, you named a couple of key players involved in this. You know, I definitely have to shout out Achieve Miami because um, Miss Miller and, and her staff and just a great group of people that come into this community, they, they look and assess needs, and they go out and do it. And I, I'll be completely honest with you, when the pandemic hit, um, you know, we got the greatest superintendent in the world, you know, shout out to... Uh, Mr. Carvalho, he, he's the best. Shout out to our board members, you know, just, just shout out to everybody in Dade County because when the pandemic hit, we didn't know what to expect. And, and we were literally on a, on a boat in a sea of uncertainty. And that's, that's the analogy that I'll use. But, but truthfully, we found out a lot about ourselves, both personally and professionally. And we found out a lot about people. And one thing that we found out, I, I don't know if you know this, I'm going to bring it back to the Overtown community and a lot of my students. And one of the things that, that people aren't aware of is that we have one of the highest number of homeless and transition students in Miami-Dade County Public Schools. We wow. have a large percentage of our, our students are on free and reduced lunch. 
um, a large percentage of our, our kids are, are in impoverished situations. So um, we are definitely in need of a lot of things. And some of the people that you named, they came together and they realized that people are in need of internet service. You know, I, I, I rock with Comcast and you know, Comcast is playing a huge role in this. And you know, something as small to some people as having internet connectivity is big for a lot of my students because a lot of my students aren't fortunate enough to be able to afford that service. So through this project, we're gonna be able to have our students receive internet service for two years free of charge. Wow. And what we do is allow our students to be able to log in, get their lessons, uh, go to class, do their homework, research, whatever they need to do. And this is all through this project, the Miami Connected Project, and those outstanding individuals that saw a need for this in our community. And I know they're going to stretch out and they're going to go out into other areas. And it's going to be huge, not just for Booker T, but for students across this district. And I definitely want to thank all of those people involved because some of my students were even in situations where they had to go to McDonald's or a place that had Wi-Fi just to do their homework and log into class. So right now we're in a place where now our students can be in the safe confines of their homes and they could log in without any connection problems or anything else like that. And that that internet platform will still allow them to receive the, the education that they need. So this is an awesome project. I'm all in. And like I said, the role that I play is small compared to some of the people that you've named and that I've named. And, and they're literally going to change lives. And I know this project affects three facets because they're talking about providing access, they're going to mm -hmm. digital literacy. And there's another component that, that I, I might brush on, but it's workforce opportunities. And what this is going to do is going to extend opportunities for them to get jobs in related fields dealing with computers and technology. So this is going to be big, not just for this year and next year, but for generations to come, because now we can see students of color, not just black students, but our Hispanic students getting opportunities in the workforce to hey, man, maybe be internet web designers or, 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 or just doing something in that field. And I think it's going to be really awesome for everybody that takes part in this thing. Man, you put you hit the nail on the head and, and I'm looking at the uh, press release and I see that that this is a project that's just not about um, Internet and homes of the people in that community. It's about, like you said, career opportunities and technology and over 100,000 students and families are going to be affected by this project, which is pretty dope. And I know you're saying you're playing a, a minor part, but here at High Low News, it's, it's all about hyper local community, especially in our black and brown communities. And the reason why I wanted to speak with you, because people don't realize the role that our principal plays in a community. You get to see these students, you know, as they transition into to adulthood, you know about the, the nuances and the crevices of the community and different things that somebody in those higher positions, no no shade or no knock to them because they're doing their job and they're, they're part of it, but you get to see a different part and I'm glad that they brought someone like you on, it, whether it was consulting or just getting information about, okay, what's really needed and how effective can we be? Um, and can you speak more to that? Like, you know, I guess, like how those public private partnership works and how that benefits, um, how that could be a benefit of someone like you in your position. You know, I, I think that you said something that's very important, Janae, and I, I want to go back to something. A few weeks ago, Achieve Miami did a, a food drive. They basically distributed, it was a food distribution to everybody in the Overtown community. Anybody could come out here to book a tea. And they were literally giving away like over 30 pounds of food, everything from even baby food to books, diapers, whatever people needed, especially at a time like this. And man, I, I definitely got to shout out Miss Miller again and Achieve Miami because she literally gets it and she understands and she's somebody that, that wants to help. And to bring individuals from all over the city of Miami to come together here at Booker T to help people in need. It says a lot about them and what they believe in. So when you, you talk about private philanthropists, there are some people that are behind the scenes. You'll never know who those people are, but they've contributed greatly to this project and so many other projects taking place. I'll also say this, you know, the role of the principal is a, is a unique role. And mm -hmm. I can actually say it is like the greatest blessing in the whole world. There's no other job 
that I would do right now because I there are, there are so many great things that come with being a principal. You know, I, I don't look at it, the negative aspects. I always think about change and, and how is it when I wake up this morning, how can I be a change maker in a kid's life, right? It could mm -hmm. be something as simple as people don't understand the importance of just saying hello to somebody or asking, how are you doing today? You know, our, our students face so many obstacles before they walk into the confines of this building. I think it's our job, not just as principals and teachers and people working in a building. I think it's our jobs as human beings to connect with young people and help them find their way. Because I know you, Janae, you had somebody like a coach, Mikhail, to guide you in a sense, to, to be a mentor. And you had a strong mom and you had strong family members to help you along the way. But we have so many of our students, they need those kind of people in their lives. And a, a, a part of my role, you know, on paper, I'm supposed to manage the facility, make sure instruction. There's this these wonderful definitions that I could pull up for you. But my, my, my job title should be a change agent, being mm. an agent of change. And I think when it's all said and done, there are certain aspects of my job that that I don't want it to come off wrong. Not everybody can do this because I That's tell real. all the time you have to care about kids first. And if you don't care about kids, then you're going to be horrible at this job. I have two incredible sons. And every day, part of my conversation is this. It is to make a world better for my kids. And since they are young people right now, for me, I have conversations with my young sons, six and four. And having those conversations puts me in a mindset to not only be a principal, but to be a parent when I walk into this building. If my students are wrong, I'm going to treat them like a dad, like, yo, we got to get you together, right? And if my kids are right, I'm going to celebrate them. I'm like, look at what my son did. Look at what my daughter did. And our students have so many things that they come up against. They need a voice and they need somebody that's going to advocate for them. When I arrived here in July, one of the first things I wanted to do was change the complete physical appearance of the school. I wanted to, you know, trim trees. I wanted to get the parking lot right. I wanted to make the hallways look like, put so much wax on the floors. I wanted to look like the floor was wet. <laughs> create an environment that the kids wanted to come to. And that's what school should be. This yes. has to be a safe haven for kids where they come to learn, interact with one another, have fun and learn lessons that they're going to carry on for the rest of their lives. And COVID, understand COVID has affected, and what I tell kids and teachers alike, like COVID-19 didn't just affect Booker T. It affected every school. It affected every kid everywhere, not just in Miami, but across the globe, right? Mm -hmm. So in dealing with these obstacles, we have to create an environment where the kids that are here, 52% of my students are here physically, right? And with that 52%, I wanted things to be as normal as possible. Yeah, we're gonna follow all CDC guidelines. We're gonna socially distance ourselves. We're gonna wear masks at all times. We're gonna have sanitizer throughout the building. We're gonna remind kids of the importance. And if you think about it, over 530,000 Americans have passed away from COVID. Yeah. And, and if we just lost one person, that would have been one person too many. And mm -hmm. it, to have lost 530,000 people, my grandmother passed away three weeks ago, right? I'm sorry. And, yeah. And, and I think about the impact that my grandmother had on me. And if it were not for her, I wouldn't even be able to talk to Janae Tate here or Hilo because she helped me get to this point. She built certain things. It was instilled in me how important an education was. She instilled in me that I got to iron my clothes before I go to school. She instilled in me that I have to be cordial and courteous to people. And all of these things that my grandmother shared with me and that she, she imparted this wisdom to me, that's what I do when I come in the building. My teachers are going to teach. They're outstanding. They're going to do a great job of teaching. My job is to, is to teach social skills. My job is to teach right and wrong. My job is to help young people and get them to a place where they're good so they could be self-sufficient and then in turn help other people. In life, if, if, if whatever you believe in, if you, you believe in standing in front of God or whatever it is, 
when I stand in front of him and if he asks me, what have you done to better the world before you left it? I want to talk so much until he says, get out of here. Just go over there. Right? <laughs> like You did it. You did good. <laughs> I don't want to stand up and say, let me think about it. If you have to think about how you've bettered this world, you're in trouble. Mm. And I really appreciate you giving me this platform, Janae, to just even say this. And I hope I'm answering your questions because I have a tendency of just running it. Oh, but no, you're good. You, you don't answer about three questions in one. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this to you. As human beings, our purpose, our purpose is to help others. And a lot of times, People go through their entire life not knowing what their purpose is. So let me say this to those of you out there right now that can hear you. It doesn't matter how much cash you have, how many followers you have, um, how, ma how many expensive purses you have, ladies, shoes, cars, clothes. That's great. I'm, I'm not knocking that. If you have it, I'm, I'm happy that you're blessed to have that. But in the process of having all of those things, find somebody who doesn't have and do something by them and you've paid your your debt right and uh, we've done everything janae from give haircuts to kids yeah shoes, clothes you name it we've done it and as long as i have air in my body and as long as the superintendent and and dr paste and and my board member sees fit for me to be here we're going to continue to do great things for young people all of my kids not just a group of them but everybody uh, you know, little Havana stand up, man. I, I, my, our, our population has shifted and we have like 62 percent of our students are Hispanic and they're like the greatest group of kids that you could find anywhere, man. And I work on my Spanish for some of my students that, that, that haven't been in the country long. But one thing that those kids have, they're tough, man, and, and they want to learn. They want to be better. They want to help their families. And it's my job to make sure they have everything that they need to get it done. So being principal, man, like it's, it's the best job in the world. And, and I'll tell you the honest truth, other people not knocking what anybody else out there does, but every morning I wake up to answer your question, Janae, I'm given an opportunity to make a difference in somebody's life. And that in itself is, is worth this price and gold. And, and I, I don't, take it for granted. If if it's my last day, I live every day like it's my last day doing this job. When we get done, we're going to feed the support staff. We're going to do some special things with them. Um, we always give things to kids. We got, we got so much going on in this building. And I really appreciate you even giving me a few minutes, not just to talk about, you know, the Miami Connected Project, but just, just to also talk about, man, the great things that's happening yeah. at BTW and the great people that work here and the great people in our school district that makes it happen. You know, to be honest with you, I can't do what I do without great leadership above me. And, and you know, when you have like one of the, the dopest superintendents in the entire world to allow me to do what it is that I do, then, then it, it makes it that much more fun. Man, you you know what? You said so many great things there. And um, just to tell a little story, like, um, a teacher of mine from high school, Miss A.B. Walker, she re recently passed away um, yesterday. And when I got that news last night, I immediately stopped and bawled because I remember how much I love that teacher and what she did for me and how she stood up for me and, and demanded the best for me. And when you were talking, it made me understand even more like people in your position, like the impact that you have on people's lives uh, forever. It could even be a semester, a year, a whole, you know, high school career. But the impression that you're making on people's lives, even if they never get a chance to tell you, you know, I know for a fact that people like you and Miss Walker are making a difference where I had to really stop. Like my my whole night was messed up because what that lady meant for to me and for me. And I know that that's how your students look at you. And we need more people like that. And people don't understand, too. I went to, like I said, Carroll City, Miami, Carroll City and our communities um, in the inner city. Um we need a little bit more care. We needed a little bit more understanding. And to have people like you who lived in the neighborhood, you went to Central, you know, you lived in that area, Robin Hood, whatever, you grew up and, and worked with these kids, you get it. 
So your approach to the students is going to be different from somebody who's not from that neighborhood. And so I'm happy that you're in that position. And I want you to know Booker T is a friend of the show. Please let us know whatever is going on. And Booker T, I would love to highlight students or, or staff. Um, salute to your teachers and to you for what you're doing, especially during this difficult time, because we all know like teachers and educators are essential employees, where no matter what our past president was trying to think or say, like <laughs> we we know like the work that y'all do. And I'm I'm so appreciative of it. And I'm and I thank you for taking time. To, to share um, your story with us and share the importance of the Miami Connected project. No, I, I appreciate it. And, and part of it, let me just shout out my teachers as well. I, I have an incredible staff and, and faculty. The teachers here are, are truly awesome people because what people fail to realize is they do this job not because they have to, but because they choose to. And every day my teachers COVID, no COVID, they're coming to work and they're going to touch kids. Man, even shout out to the cafeteria workers, the security monitors, the, the custodians. It's a group thing. And, and collectively, we all come together for the greater good of young people. And it's not just at Booker T. It's across our great school district. At schools across this district, man, they're doing great things. So I just want to shout out everybody in the field of education, whatever it is that you're doing, the bus drivers, the bus A's, the crossing guards, everything yeah. plays a role in making this happen. And you said something about a teacher and you know, it, it's like you said something, it's years later, you you are still affected. And you know, I might be on a, on a block and I might see a car rolling up and I'm getting ready to start running or something. <laughs> What's going on? And I'm good. If I show up, if it's a fast food restaurant, if it's Joe's, anywhere that I've had students, Man, I'd like to say that my face is clean out here. They don't put special sauce in my food. <laughs> As to be getting a special sauce, they're giving me the heavy bag. I might show up and order number one. I'm leaving with 40 of them. I'm like, hey, <laughs> Pop a pill up, Mr. Lawyers, we got some more stuff for you, you know, and, and it means a lot because, like you said, you'll never be a rock star being a teacher. But to your kids, you are a rock star. So Definitely. In some spots, I might, back in the days, now, not anymore, I might walk into a club. The DJ may know me. Mr. Lord, <laughs> listen, this is the only time I get to be a, a celebrity, so I'm going to live it up, whether it's on the corner of Overtown, if it's Opelika, or if it's Miami Beach, man. Shout out to all the students that have come through Dade County. I know somebody great has touched them in some way, shape, form, or fashion. And I'm just thankful that I get to do a job where we can help people every day. And Janae, I, I gotta say again, how proud I am of you and how Thank you. I am for the work that you're doing out here. Like I said, I, I could die today and I've fulfilled everything. And I have made it on high low. I'm there now. <laughs> <laughs> man thank you you know what you make an impact in our community and like i said thank you for all the work that you do and thank you for joining us today on hollow news you know tell your staff uh thank you and y'all have a good day over there with y'all uh, appreciation lunch <laughs> no doubt stay safe and blessings to everybody out there okay all right y'all mr lawrence is amazing like booker t you guys that community is blessed over town you guys are blessed um as you all know, uh, follow Hollow News um, on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and LinkedIn. Also, subscribe to our newsletter and check us out on HollowNewsMiami.com. You can get all the information, all the latest news on what's going on in South Florida for urban millennials. Again, this has been another episode of Hollow News. Thank you for joining.